Good afternoon. I am Nancy Brickhouse, Provost at Baylor University, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Academic Honors Convocation. Many of you join us today by Zoom. You have our warm welcome as well and appreciation for joining us virtually. Endowed by Harry and Anna Jeans in 1992, and now overseen by the Baylor University Honors College, Academic Honors Week is an ongoing recognition and celebration of the rigorous and exciting undergraduate educational experience provided by Baylor University. This week's activities include today's academic convocation and the opportunity for honors program seniors to present the overviews of their thesis research. Originally recognizing only outstanding students from the College of Arts and Sciences and the Honors College, the academic convocation has, was expanded in 2005 and now also recognizes outstanding students from the Robbins College of Health and Human Services, the Hankamer School of Business, the School of Education, the School of Engineering and Computer Science, the School of Music, the Louise Harrington School of Nursing, and the Diane R. Garland School of Social Work. It is my pleasure to welcome the honorees for 2021, along with their accompanying deans, department chairs, program directors, and mentors. We will remain indebted to Mr. and Mrs. Jeans for their endowment that has made it possible for 29 years to offer Academic Honors Week and for us to acknowledge and congratulate the intellectual accomplishments of so many of Baylor's finest undergraduate scholars across the disciplines. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts and the accomplishments of the men and women we honor today. We know that we are all a gift from God, from you, and we pray that you will provide us with the wisdom and courage in the use of these gifts to serve your purposes. Help us to be your voice, your face, your touch in the world. May we always seek your glory rather than our own glory. May we be concerned about the needs of others as well as the needs of ourselves. May we strive to achieve the ideals we have been taught, and may we preserve the beauty in this world that you have so wondrously made. We pray all these things with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Now let me invite Dean Douglas Henry of the Honors College forward to say a few words. Friends and colleagues who are gathered here and those who are joining us by Zoom, it is my pleasure on behalf of the Honors College, the Honors Program, and the College of Arts and Sciences to join Provost Brickhouse in expressing our ongoing gratitude to Jay Harry and Anna Jeans, whose vision to honor student intellectual pursuits and achievements through their generous endowment of Academic Honors Week in 1992 continues to nurture the kind of recognition we're here today to bring about. They were beloved and for many years actively present and engaged in these events. Uh, our memory of them and our appreciation to them continues unabated. Also, a word of appreciation is due to friends who have helped make this uh, event possible. Uh, most of all, uh, we want to uh, acknowledge the outstanding students for your overall achievements and more about our gratitude and rallying around you in a moment. To the faculty representatives and advisors who have invested themselves in you, our outstanding students, and who have nominated you and cheered you on, we express gratitude. To Laura Hendricks and her team and institutional events for the success of this virtual event, we give thanks. For departments all over campus whose diligent work and gathering lists of outstanding students has been an integral part of bringing us to this event, and to Autumn Henneke, 
coordinator for our convocation program and assistant to the dean in my office. We give thanks as well for you, Autumn. Those words of gratitude having been said, it is my great honor uh, to acknowledge by way of introduction and to invite after me our keynote speaker, an alumnus of the university, Rudy Chow, who will present a short, inspiring talk, a different kind of drive. Let me say a few words about Rudy. We just had a delightful lunch together and traded stories about his time at Baylor and memories together of um, this great university. Rudy graduated in 2016 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Relations. He has, from his own experience at Baylor and in the years thereafter, accrued a remarkable insight into the nature of excellence. It's part of his own vision, part of his own calling, part of his own life. Rudy currently lives in Dallas, where he works as project manager with J.P. Morgan um, Chase Bank's Merchant Services Organization. During his time at Baylor, uh, he was a member of the Baylor Interdisciplinary Corps. He lived four years in the Honors Residential College, where he provided tremendous leadership for the men and women who came through that residential community. He founded Baylor Civitas, a student organization chartered with the purpose of encouraging local, national, and global citizenship among students and starting discussions on topics ranging from health and education to philanthropy. As I said, his short talk today is entitled A Different Kind of Drive. Rudy, we're so proud of you. Welcome you forward now to share with us these are outstanding students of 2021. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dean Henry, for the kind introduction. And thank you all for your time today. I'd like to start off by congratulating the students who are being recognized here this afternoon. This event is an affirmation of the hard work that you have put in over the last few years and I'm honored to be here to celebrate with you. It's also a treat for me to be back on Baylor campus because it brings back so many great memories, from Dr. Pepper hours, to sitting on the green and gold benches, to the fact that I proposed to my wife, a fellow Baylor alum, at the fountain that sits just outside of this building. The best of these lessons actually came in the form of, uh, the best of these memories came in the form of lessons. I'm gonna share with you today a few lessons that I learned from my time at Baylor. The one that still carries me through life today is the importance of why. Baylor taught me how important it is to know why we do the things that we do. What drives us and motivates us? The university makes it clear that their goal is to form lifelong students and prepare us to be successful in all pillars of life. In order to share you, with you my purpose, I'm gonna share two stories that up until this point, I've mostly kept to myself. And once we discuss these stories, we'll go on to talk about why this is important to you. Story number one, there comes a point at the end of every semester where you pack your car, you get in, and you start to drive away from campus. Whether you're going home, to an internship, or to a future job, this time is usually a time of reflection where you reflect on a successful semester, great memories you've made, connections you've made, in anticipation that you will either come back the next semester to pick up right back where you left off or continue on your journey in life. For me, that drive was filled with anxiety and stress. Every minute that I drove further and further from the Baylor campus, my anxiety grew because I wasn't sure that I'd be able to return. Now, as a student, I relied heavily on financial aid. And every semester, I spent time with the financial aid counselors discussing my plan for the next semester. Obviously, it worked out because I was here all four years, and that's why I'm standing in front of you here today. But why? Why, through the stress, through the anxiety, through the uncertainty, did I keep coming back over and over again? Story number two. A few weeks before I was scheduled to start my freshman year here at Baylor, I was on the phone with an admissions counselor at Texas Tech University. Now, don't get me wrong. Texas Tech is a great school. But Baylor was my number one choice. Baylor was my dream. About a week before the financial deadline for Baylor, however, I didn't know that I could pay for it. And at the last second, I was scrambling for alternatives. And so as I was on the phone with this counselor, I was asking if they had last minute student spots available. Her answer was yes. 
All I had to do was fill out some paperwork. Sounds easy enough. So I took the paperwork and I got to work. After I went about halfway through, decided to take a break and thought it'd be best to make a phone call. I called a friend who I had met here on Baylor campus at orientation just a few weeks before and had kept in touch with. Called him, discussed my situation, and we decided to pray. You know those times when people say they heard a voice and it was unmistakably God? And it was clear to them what that voice was saying and what action was required from them? I can count three times that's happened in my life. Two of them were with this friend. One of them was on this day. As we prayed, I heard this voice, and this voice told me that the path that he had laid in front of me was through Balaam. It was unmistakable, and I knew exactly what it was saying. We continued praying and hung up. Even though I heard this voice, and it was unmistakable whose voice that was, I was already losing hope. I continued to fill out the application. That was about midday, maybe on a Wednesday. By Friday, the paperwork was done and ready to submit. As I was doing my final review and making any last minute edits, I get a phone call. That call was from the Baylor Financial Aid Office. And they were calling with good news. They were calling the share, but they were able to find some additional funds, just enough, where if you couple it with the scholarships that I had already gotten, it would pay for my first semester. So with that in mind, I scrapped the documents and doubled down on Baylor. Now at the end of that first semester, as I was driving away from campus, that promise came back into my mind. And I remember it, I remembered it that day, as well as at the end of every other semester since. And it was that promise that guided me through the challenges, through the uncertainties, and through the doubt. I'm a few years out of college now, and my purpose has changed. I'm now focused on being the best husband and the best father that I can be. And every time I encounter a challenge, I judge it against that foundation. And we're probably at the time where you're wondering by now, why does this matter to you? It matters because in a few weeks, you're gonna pack up your car. You're gonna get in the driver's seat and you're gonna drive to your next destination. And that path ahead may not be certain. As you take on that drive and as you prepare for that moment, I implore you to ask yourself, why? Why are you taking that next step in life? Why that graduate program? Why that company? Because once you settle on that purpose, the challenges that lay ahead cease to matter. They become only a means to an end because the road ahead has already been paved. As I close our chat here today, I wanna to leave you with a quote from Mark Twain. He wrote, the most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Because once you find that purpose, it orients you onto your path ahead and challenges that you encounter along the way no longer sway you because you're focused not on the challenges, but you're focused on the destination. With that, I'll step aside and let you forge your head. Thank you for your time and congratulations again to the students that are being honored at the ceremony. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rudy. That was truly, truly fantastic. I'm so pleased that God spoke the green and gold into your heart instead of the black and instead of the black and red. Thank you for that. And perhaps one of our students uh, hearing all of this today in five or six years would be returning to do exactly what you're doing. And thanks for representing Baylor uh, in such wonderful ways as you obviously do each day. Uh, so congratulations on all your success since leaving. Uh, my name is Dr. Wes Knoll. <coughs> I serve as Baylor's Vice Provost for Undergraduate uh, Education. I'm delighted to be here with you today to, uh, to participate in the part of this uh, that has to do with our academic uh, recognitions. It's my pleasure to recognize as a group those among our outstanding students who are seniors graduating with honors. Congratulations to all of you on your accomplishments. We would also like to recognize as a group the Phi Beta Kappa initiates for 2020-2021. Phi Beta Kappa is the nation's oldest scholastic honor society, founded at William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia in 1776. 
The Baylor University chapter, Zeta of Texas, was chartered in 1976 at the Society's Bicentennial and continues its work on campus, recognizing and encouraging excellence in the liberal arts and sciences. I'd like to thank Dr. Jeff Hunt, Secretary for Phi Beta Kappa, and Dr. Dan Hanchi from the Classics Department in the College of Arts and Sciences, and the Zeta chapter president. Uh, it's now my pleasure to begin recognizing our outstanding students by college and school. Uh, where you're here in person, as we typically do this, and hopefully we will do this next April, I would ask you to stand briefly and be recognized as your names and your professors' names and those representing the departments are named. But instead, you'll have to celebrate uh, via Zoom. But I guess the good news is you can blow air horns and high-five whatever you would like in your own Zoom living room. Uh, and next year, hopefully, we'll be, we'll be right here. So to begin, uh, from the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, the dean there being Dr. Lee Nort, uh, from the Aerospace Studies uh, Department, also known as Air Force ROTC, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Bryant is the chair. The two students being recognized are Timothy Davis and Rachel Mason. From the Anthropology Department, uh, the chair being Dr. Michael Muhlenbein, uh, two students being recognized, they are Jacqueline Murphy and Ali Dove Flagar. From the Art and Art History Department, where the chair is Dr. Heidi Hornick Parsons. Uh, we have two students being recognized, one from the Art History track, and that is Michaela Schmidt, and uh, from the Studio Art track, Kristen Boyer. From the Biology Department, uh, where the chair is Dr. Dwayne Simmons, we have two students being recognized. They are Emily Dunn and Emily Schultz. From the Chemistry and Biochemistry uh, Department, where Dr. Patrick Farmer is the chair, two students being recognized, there are Kara Warren and Ryan Wong. Uh, from the Department of Classics, where Dr. Ken Jones is the chair, two students being recognized, there are Ethan Charles Bryant and Grace Rimmer. From the Communication Department, Dr. David Schluter is the chair there. We have uh, three students being recognized from the communication specialist track, Catherine Tennessee Cunningham. And from the communication studies track, we have Samuel Douthat Aker and we have Jessica Austin. From the English department, Dr. Kevin Gardner is the chair. We have two students being recognized. They are Sarah Burning and Kelsey Mosley. From, from environmental science, Dr. George Cobb is the chair. Three students being recognized, each from a different track. From the environmental health science track, Connor Crow. From the environmental science uh, track, Fallon Bain. And from environmental studies, Ava Corey Roberts. From the film and digital media department, where Christopher Hansen is the chair, two students to recognize here, Sarah F. Allen and Nicholas S. Diaz. From geosciences, Dr. Stephen Dreesey is the chair. Uh, the two students to be recognized are August Dreyer and Shandell Thomas. From the Department of History, Dr. Barry Hankins, chair, two students, Danielle Sanchez and Benjamin Jack Young. From the Institute of Air Science, Dr. Trey Cade is the director, two students to acknowledge and recognize today, Catlin Caitlin Eby and Natalie Mendoza. From the Department of Journalism, Public Relations and New Media, Dr. Mia Moody Ramirez is the chair there. Three students each from a different track. From the advertising track, we have Carrie Berkeley. From the news editorial track, we have Caitlin Aramusby. And from Public Relations, Catherine Hurd. From the mathematics department, Dr. Darina Matria is the chair. Two students to recognize today, Ethan Aaron Reyes and Sierra Maria Shetler. From Medical Humanities, Dr. Lauren Barron is the chair. Two students, Deborah Ortuno and Jada Rosa. From Military Science, uh, home of Army ROTC, Le Lieutenant Colonel Janine Robinson Turner is the chair. Two students to recognize here, Cadet Michael Lotspeech Yedo and Cadet Christopher Miller. From the Modern Languages and Cultures uh, Department, we have Dr. Michael Long as the interim chair. We have four divisions uh, in that department, one student from each. 
Uh, uh, the French department is re represented by Dr. Christian Bratou, the German, department, German division by Dr. Jennifer Good, the Russian division also by Jennifer Good, and the Spanish division uh, by uh, Leslie Harkema. The outstanding student in French is Jonathan Wu. The outstanding student in German is Fallon Bain. Outstanding student in Russian is Leah Elizabeth Ash. And from the Spanish division, uh, being awarded uh, posthumously, Sarah Turner. From the Museum Studies Department, Dr. Kenneth Haferteep is the chair. Two students to recognize, Morgan Ballard and Aaron Graham. From the Philosophy Department, Dr. Todd Buris is the chair there. Two students to recognize, Clay Domini and Seth Houghton. Physics Department, Dr. Dwight Russell as interim chair, two students, Nolan Kraft and Alexis Simmons. From the Political Science Department, Dr. David Clinton is the chair, uh, two students to recognize uh, posthumously, again, uh, Jake Conyer and Haley Stiles. From the International Studies area within political science, where Dr. Ivy Hammerly is the director, two students, Leah Elizabeth Ash and Lauren Margaret McLean. From the Psychology and Neuroscience uh, Department, Dr. Chuck Weaver is the chair. <clears throat> we have two students to recognize. From the Psychology a major within that department, we have Catherine Ann Nesbitt. And from the Neuroscience major, we have Taryn E. Cook. From the Department of Religion, Dr. Bill Bellinger is chair. Two students to recognize, Claire Dillashaw and Mackenzie Wells. From the Department of Sociology, where Carson Minkin is the chair, one student to uh, recognize today, Christy Hoffman. From Statistical Science, Dr. Jim Stamey is the chair. Two students, the first is Natalie DeBonapala and Kevin Gibson. And the final department from the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, the Theater Arts Department, where Dr. Deanna Totenbeard is chair, two students to recognize Jacoby Beltran and Natalie Hammonds. Now from the Hankhammer School of Business, where Dr. Terry Manus is dean, and uh, from the Accounting and Business Law Department, where Dr. Brad Lale is the chair, uh, two students, the first from the accounting area within uh, that department, Nicole Salama, and from the TS CPA Accounting Excellence Track, we have CJ Foster. From the Baylor Business Fellows Program, where Dr. Alan Seward is the director, two students, Rachel Eloquin and Miriam McCormick. From the Economics Department, Dr. Chuck North is the chair, three students to recognize, the first from the BBA in Economics major, we have Sophia Puvong Fulton, and from the BS in Economics program, Trey Grijalva. And from the BA in Economics, we have Irina Gregorieva. From International Business within the Economics Department, where Dr. Stephen Gardner is the director, we have Casey Scharf. From the Entrepreneurship and Corporate Innovation uh, Department within Hankammer, Dr. Peter Klein is the chair. We have one student to recognize, Madeline Grace Yancey. And from the Finance, Insurance, and Real Estate Department, where Dr. Shane Underwood is chair. From the Finance Track, we have Charles Hooker to recognize. From Real Estate, Jacob Birdsong. And from Risk Management and Insurance, we have Charles Hooker as well. From the Information Systems Department, uh, Dr. Jonathan Trower is the chair. Two students to recognize. The first is Brady Probosco. And the second one is Shichi Deshmukh. From the management department, where Dr. Emily Hunter is the chair, the human resource management track, we have two students to recognize, Danielle Brackett and Bradley Graham. From the management area within the management department, we have Maddie Palmer. And from supply chain management, we have Carolyn Lipman. From the marketing department, where Chris Pullig is chair of uh, the marketing area within that department. We have Sarah Frisky to recognize and Jocelyn Peterson. From nonprofit marketing within that department where Dr. Jim Roberts is the director, 
we have Madeline Self to recognize. From professional selling within marketing, where Dr. Andrea Dixon is the director, we have four students to recognize today. First is Dylan Fontaine, then Meredith Kirkland, Maddie McKenzie, and Riley Strawler. Finally, from the marketing department, the sports strategy and sales track, where Dr. Daryl Lanus is the director, we have one student to recognize, Ashley Cooper. From the School of Education, where Dr. Shanna Hagen-Burke is the dean, from the Department of Curriculum and Instruction, where Dr. Brooke Blevins is the chair, we have uh, six students to recognize, two from each of the following three tracks. From elementary education, we have Vanessa Jesserin and Nicole Sussman. From middle grades education, we have Savannah D. Hunt and Albert Schaefer. And from secondary education, we have Lauren Clausen and Madison Hadfield. <clears throat> from the educational psychology department in the School of Ed, where Dr. Grant Morgan is the chair, we have two students to recognize from the all-level special education track. They are Charlie Campbell and Alexandra Robeson. From the School of Engineering and Computer Science, where Dr. Dennis O'Neill is the dean. From the Computer Science Department, we have Dr. Bill Booth as the Assistant Chair and Senior Lecturer. From Computer Science, we have uh, Matthew McCuskell to recognize. And from inf Informatics, we have Samuel Chinoy. From the Electrical and Computer Engineering major within ECS, where Dr. Scott Koziol is Associate Professor and Assistant Chair, we have three students to recognize. They are Nathaniel Brown, David Davis, and Sydney Scherner. From the Mechanical Engineering uh, major within ECS, uh, Dr. Ben Kelly is the professor who oversees that area. Two students to recognize. They are Katie Lynn Gazarowski and Emily Stoller. And from the BS in Engineering program, overseen by Dr. Ben Kelly as well, two students to recognize, Alina Gavrilov and Quinn Peters. From the, college, the Robbins College of Health and Human Sciences, where Dr. Rodney Bowden is the dean, uh, the Communication Sciences and Disorders Department, three students to recognize. Uh, Dr. Peter Park is the associate chair uh, in that department. Dr. Diane Loeb is the chair, and Dr. Mikey Ritter is the undergraduate program director. The three students to recognize from that department are Catherine Kraft, Hyun Park, and Victoria Thompson. From the Family and Consumer Sciences Department within Robbins College, uh, where Dr. Sherry Dragu is the chair, specifically the apparel, merchandise, apparel design and merchandising track, where Professor Jane Fader is the division leader. Uh, we have to recognize Cameron Walker. And from uh, the Dr. Rochelle Brunson is, is rep representing the apparel merchandising design track within that department. And the student to recognize in that area today is Vinay Jesserin. From the Child and Family Studies track uh, within that department, where Dr. Nicole McEnich is the division leader, we have Georgia Tekel to recognize. From the Interior Design track in that area, where Professor, Professor Michelle Brown is the division leader, the student to recognize as outstanding this year is Hannah McClard. From Nutrition Sciences, where uh, Professor Stanley Wilfong is the division leader. The student to recognize today is Sarah Gitan. From the Health, Human Performance, and Recreation uh, Department within Robbins College, where Dr. Dale Connolly is the interim chair. Uh, from the Exercise Physiology Program, where Dr. Yunsik Ko is director, the student to recognize today is Don Guernsey. From the Health Science Studies track, where Dr. Tricia Blaylock is the director. Two students to recognize today, they are Megan Benicky and Lydia Rogerson. Finally, from Robbins College, uh, the public health program where Professor Margot Shanks is the undergraduate program director. We have three students to recognize. They are Rihanna Clavon, Aaron Hudgens, <coughs> and Penny Smith. Uh, from the Honors College where Dr. Doug Henry is the dean, uh, from the Great Text Department, where Dr. William Weaver is the interim director, we have two students 
to recognize Elizabeth Harrell and H.D. Tolson. From the University Scholars Program, where Dr. Jeff Hunt is the director, we have two students to recognize, Carolyn Carper and Catherine Marple. From the School of Music, where Dr. Gary Mortensen is dean, uh, in the Academic Studies Division, represented by Dr. Scott McAllister, Director and Professor of Composition and Division Director, and Dr. Christy Morrill, Associate Professor of Horn. Their student to hold up today and recognize is Keaton Merrick. From the Vocal Studies area within the School of Music, where Dr. Randy Umstead is Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, the student to recognize is Shannon Skillman. From the Louise Harrington School of Nursing, where Dr. Linda Plank is the dean, uh, we have Dr. Karen Cotter representing uh, as associate dean for pre-licensure programs, and Dr. Beth Holquist as the coordinator of their fastback program. The two students to recognize as outstanding are Stephanie Slaughter and Catherine Katie Bott. Uh, and our last school today, the Dr. Diana R. Garland School of Social Work, represented by Dr. John Singletary, the dean, uh, we have Professor Lucy Ramos Hoppy as the BSW program director representing them. And the two students to recognize are Hannah Garcia and Catherine Graham. What I'd like to do, even though we don't have a huge room of people, I'd like for those of us here to give all these students a round of applause. I just want to add my congratulations to all of you and thanks for all of your hard work and we're going to have an in-person commencement here real soon, and we can all get together uh, in the way it will be in May of 2021 and celebrate. So I'd like to invite Dr. Jim Benninghoff to come up and uh, present the, uh, uh, the award he has. Thank you, Wes. I want to add my hearty congratulations to all of you students. Uh, for your achievements and for your steadfast perseverance and your great work here at Baylor. I especially want to thank Rudy Chow for the message that he brought with uh, maybe in some ways more questions than answers, which is very appropriate, I think, as, as all of you move forward in your, um, in your individual career paths and in your, uh, the paths of your lives. Each year we conclude the Academic Honors Convocation by announcing the winner of the Cornelia Marshall Smith Professor of the Year Award. This is the premier faculty award that's uh, presented each year at Baylor University. The, uh, this honor was inaugurated 18 years ago by the Office of the Provost. Cornelia Marshall Smith, after whom the honor is named, was a longtime member of the Baylor community. She was an alumna. She was a professor and chair of Baylor's biology department. She was also a Robert Browning scholar, and as many of us still remember, she participated actively in all facets of university life, even after her retirement and almost until her death at the age of 101 years. This award is, and I'll quote from the, the um, description of the award here, presented each year to a Baylor faculty member who makes a superlative contribution to the learning environment at Baylor, including teaching, which is judged to be of the highest order of intellectual acumen and pedagogical effectiveness, research, which is recognized as outstanding by the national and or international, as well as local community of scholars, and service, which is regarded as exemplary in building the character of intellectual community at Baylor. We solicit nominations for the award from all faculty, students, and alumni, and the recipient of the award is chosen from among the nominees by a committee of four faculty members and the vice provost for faculty affairs. Each award winner receives a commemorative plaque as well as a cash award of $20,000, and the winner then presents a lecture on a topic of his or her choosing in the academic year following the presentation of the award. So this year's honoree will, will present a lecture next year. I want to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the members of the selection committee for their gracious and painstaking work. Uh, this year that, that consisted of Vanessa Castleberry, Sandy Cooper, 
Ann McGlashan, and Mark Taylor. I'd also like very much to thank all the members of the Baylor community who participated in the nomination process. In fact, I'll go even further and encourage all of you who are attending this event, being honored here today to participate in the nominating process next year and in the years to come. Each year, we've had a tremendously worthy recipient for this award, but we're entirely dependent on you to nominate these people. And I imagine that quite a few of you who are attending this event would have had experiences with faculty whom you'd like to nominate. The materials that are submitted each year for these nominees almost, not almost, they always reveal an overwhelming array of contributions that they've made to the university. I'll, I'll mention that this is usually a very humbling experience to serve on the committee because one looks at these materials and says, what have I been doing? <laughs> but uh, they, there's tremendous service and, and accomplishments that are reflected here. Uh, as the criteria for the award indicate, these contributions result from the activities that traditionally occupy university faculty members, teaching, research and creative activity, and service. Various candidates excel to different degrees in these realms. Some are particularly renowned for their teaching. Some have made extensive and powerful contributions to research conversations in the United States and around the globe. And some have tirelessly served Baylor and the local and broader community. I was just guilty of committing categorization dividing faculty members' professional contributions into this traditional triumvirate of teaching, research or creative activity, and service. We academics are in the habit of drawing distinctions and delineating categories, and this can be helpful in some ways, but I think that thinking in categories risks missing some of the essence of the work of this year's nominee. She has certainly achieved a great deal in all three of these realms, in teaching, research, and service, but I think it might be most revealing for us to observe how clearly she has been engaged in service through research and teaching. To be sure, our honoree is thoroughly recognized by her students and her departmental peers as an excellent and deeply committed teacher. She's well known for her creative classroom techniques, her availability to students, and her continuing involvement in developing and improving her own skills, and she's called upon frequently to share these skills with others. Students write about how clear it is that she is invested in their success on an individual basis. She's certainly deeply also involved in traditional service activities within her professional guild, within the university, and in a wide range of activities and leadership in her community and church. But perhaps of greatest note, our honoree's research and writing have been very directly and overtly oriented toward clarifying for all of us issues and situations that strike at the very core of our relationships with one another. She has written or co-written four books and about 30 articles. Reviewers and commentators on the books, including the renowned Henry Louis Gates, Jr., have described the books with phrases such as wide-ranging and comprehensive, must read, durable and timely, perspicacious, inspiring and incisive, and meticulous research, diligent analysis, and brilliant interpretation. And the most distinctive element of the work that has garnered these accolades is the topic that it addresses. And here it's fortuitous that uh, Rudy talked to us about the why, because as we look at the why of these books, these writings, this research, um, we can see a very direct impact on who we are and how we think. In this case, we're talking about the ways that race is and has been depict depicted for widespread audiences in the media. And again, I'll yield to others more expert than I am to describe this, as some of the most powerful comments about her work bear specifically on the ways that it can enrich our lives. One scholar says that her books, or it says that one of her books is, quote, part of a black survival guide that is still being written. Another describes her 
very timely and important explication of the impact of new social media platforms on the deployment of black humor in the early 21st century. Another book is described as a durable and timely portfolio of the Obama candidacy, presidency, and family, and their inspiring place in America's cultural history, for which yet another scholar says our honoree deserves a standing ovation. Finally, a third book's service to our national discussion is described as, quote, merging the disconnected issues of diversity, critical theory, social media, discourse, and brand slash personal uh, apologia in a seamless, well-written way, showing how the connective tissues between these theories are popular culture and mediated communication. All of this should make clear how the excellent work of our honoree is obviously and crucially relevant to issues that stare all of us in the face on a daily basis and thus provide an incalculable service. By this time, it will be no surprise to most of you who have been around Baylor for any length of time for me to announce with great pleasure that the 18th recipient of the Cornelia Marshall Smith Professor of the Year Award from the Department of Journalism, Public Relations, and New Media is Dr. Mia Moody Ramirez. As I welcome her to receive the award and make a few remarks, I want to add one additional bit of information. Dr. Moody Ramirez plans to contribute the financial award associated with this honor to a scholarship fund for journalism students. So we appreciate that deeply. Dr. Moody Ramirez. And let me present you with this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She hasn't said she'll contribute the plaque to anybody. I think she'll probably keep <laughs> that herself. Yes, I will keep the plaque, but, uh, but thank, you. Congratulations. thank you so Congratulations. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much for that introduction. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> it's your act. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, I give honor to God. Every day I am thankful for his blessings. Next, I would like to thank my family for their support. In particular, my parents who are here today for their strong upbringing that they provided to both my siblings and myself. I am also grateful to my husband who is also here for his love and his support. And to my children who have been the reason that I have worked so hard and, and tried to be the best that I could be as a, as a person. My oldest son will be joining the Baylor family in the fall, and I am so excited. Sick and bears. Um, I would also like to thank my colleagues who have been supportive throughout my 20 years here at Baylor, from the ones who wrote letters of support like Bob Darden, Connie Nichols, Cassie Burleson, Guillermo Almeida, and Lakia Scott. I would la also like to thank my students who nominated me, Danielle Kilgo, Josh Cortez, Andrew Ortiz, Jade Fells, Duran Graham. Thank you all for believing in me and thank you for carrying the torch. My students are doing wonderful things. I'm so proud of them. Um, also, I would like to thank my mentors such as Sarah Stone, Kim Kellison, and Pearl Beverly who have been there to offer great advice and who have been very supportive over the years. I am truly thankful. In particular, I want to spotlight Bob Darden, who has encouraged me to apply for this award for many years. This is not the first year I've applied for this award. Um, and I was ready to give up. This is actually, the, I think, the third year. But Do uh, Bob Darden told me, go ahead and apply one more year. And I am so glad I listened, because here we are. Dr. Cornelia Marshall Smith, as uh, Jim Benninghoff said, was a former professor and chair in the biology department at Baylor and director of the Strecker Museum for many years. She was a true trailblazer and a role model for women like me. It is a privilege to follow in her footsteps and to serve as chair of the Department of Journalism, Public Relations, and New Media today. 
the Dr. Cornelia Marshall Smith Professor of the Year Award is given to a professor who fosters a positive learning environment at Baylor through teaching, research, and service. I am overjoyed that my colleagues and students saw fit to nominate me for this award. This is just a true honor for me, particularly this year when we have been dealing with the pandemic, we have been dealing with social injustices, and for me to receive this award this year is truly special. So thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing me. And I am so honored to join the ranks of professors like Tom Hanks, Ann Rushing, Kevin Penny, Bob Darden, Andrea Dixon, and so many others. I am looking forward to continuing to give back to the Baylor community. And this award will enable me to do so much more for, my, for students in my department. And as mentioned by Dr. Benninghoff, I am going to give the award to help fund a scholarship for students in the journalism department. So thank you for the financial award that is given to me. So again, thank you and God bless. Thank you again, Mia. The gratitude is certainly on our part for all the work that you have done, all the thoughtfulness with which you've done it, all the grace with which you've done it. So we appreciate that so much. I want to thank all of you who have attended. Once again, I want to thank uh, Rudy Chow for bringing the message to us. Uh, thanks to all of you, not only for attending, but for your very good work at Baylor as you've advanced your own education and no doubt uh, cooperated with others and worked with them uh, as they've advanced their education as well. With all best wishes to all of you, we'll now adjourn this meeting.